Way back in 2014, I taught myself to code. I was a self-taught programmer and actually landed my first job. And looking back on it, with all the experience that I have now of mentoring and coaching people who are trying to become software developers and helping a lot of them to get there, I noticed that there are things that I did back then in terms of my habits, choices I made that were not very good. They were what I would call regrets. So what I wanted to do in this video is talk about some of the biggest mistakes I made during that process when I was trying to become a software developer so that many of you guys could avoid a lot of that. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Looking back on 2014, I think the, the big regret that comes to mind first is just thinking that more is better when it comes to study time. I think that back then I was all about hard work and the hustle culture and the 10,000 hour rule that was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell, which basically says that when you spend about 10,000 hours doing anything, you become good at it, right? Like if you wanna become a skateboarder, you spend 10,000 hours skateboarding, you'll become like a really good at it, you become a master, whatever you wanna call it. So putting these ideas together, I thought that if I could study 50, 60 hours per week, that that would get me to my goal a lot faster and I would be the best possible developer that I could be in a short period of time. And I think this idea is good, but it's not great. <laughs> and you can go really wrong with this. So one of the things that you wanna make sure you're doing as you're on your journey here, or in the early stages at the very least, is you have to be balanced with how you approach this. So what I mean is that, Basically, at any given point during the week, you're gonna hit a certain threshold of hours that you studied, and there's gonna be a diminishing return on those hours studied, right? So maybe the first 20 to 25 hours that you're gonna spend every week are going to be good, high quality, you're gonna get a lot from them, but at a certain point, it's just going to not be as effective. Either you're not going to retain the information as well, maybe when you're actually studying, you're not actually studying because you're opening Facebook, but in your mind you're thinking, well, if I'm front, in front of the computer thinking about programming, it doesn't matter what I do. Um, there's a number of things that happen as you sort of increase your time. Now, for some of you guys, it will be 20 hours or 25 hours. For others of you, maybe it's 35, 40. It kind of depends on your life situation. So if you are working or not working, that makes a big difference. If you have family commitments or no family commitments, these things can make a big difference on how much time that you can spend. But I'd say 60 hours a week, let's just get that off the table. I think most people can usually do about 40 hours maximum, and I'd say maximum spread across seven days. For many of you guys, it will be closer to 20 or 25 hours. But you have to figure that out. I recommend tracking your time and really starting to see and being able to make distinctions for yourself of when you start to have those diminishing results as far as your time. So just wanna be clear here, definitely wanna spend as much time as you can studying, but just be paying attention to when the study time actually is not effective, when you're distracted, when you find that the process is unbearable. Maybe that means taking breaks, getting away from programming so that you recharge, and ultimately when you do spend your time studying, you're getting the maximum effectiveness out of that time. The second thing I regret looking back in 2014 is just the fact that I didn't build a lot of projects. So I definitely built some challenging projects. Like if you look at what I built back then, I built a Tetris app, which was oddly enough the first thing I built and that was super challenging. But I, I always downplayed the idea of doing simple projects like an expense tracker or like a to-do app because I think my problem was that I just I couldn't settle for something that was that simple but I always made those projects uh, much harder than they had to be so I was like if I'm gonna do a to-do app it has to be a big ordeal but there's actually a lot of value in creating smaller projects at least early on uh, just sort of over and over again so building something like a to-do app is definitely something I recommend it's not something you should go like well you know I really want to step up my game here um, you could also build something that's similar to a to-do app over and over again, right? So you could build an expense tracker, you could build a note taker, you could build an application that tracks your favorite books, your favorite recipes, whatever it may be, but it's okay to build things over and over again. It's more about repetition and drilling down a lot of the fundamentals, a lot of concepts just over and over again. Now, I would recommend over time increasing the challenge level, right, to get to the point where you're building complex and challenging applications, but it's not necessarily that you are only gonna build one application the whole time and that's gonna go in your portfolio. Don't be afraid to build smaller things to get your confidence going. Now, speaking of regrets, if you don't go down below and smash the like button, I promise you you that you will regret it. So make sure to go down there and do that. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, which is all about how to become a programmer, make sure to go down there, hit the subscribe button. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. And really, I'd say my last regret is that I wasn't very confident when I went into the job hunt process when I probably should have been. 
And this is a little bit different, but kind of bear with me here. So when I started applying for jobs, I felt like the biggest imposter ever. <laughs> like, who am I to go out there? I'm just this guy who's been doing it on his own. Like, why should I deserve this? But here's the thing. I committed my life to this. Like up until that point, it had been about a year or close to a year at the very least where I was consistent. I was spending a bulk of my time doing this. I was doing pretty much anything I possibly could to land my first job and be good enough to land that first job. And so I think the, the thing I wish is that I at least had the confidence to feel worthy of an interview. Maybe I wasn't good enough, right? Like who knows if I was truly good enough, uh, if I met that threshold. But if you've done everything you could, if you've put in the time, if you've followed the process as they say, then going to an interview is, you should feel that you deserve it. You shouldn't feel that you're entitled to it and you shouldn't feel entitled that you should get a job, but say, hey, I've done everything I could up until this point, so just let the chips fall where they may. So the biggest thing for those of you who are out there who are maybe about to start applying for jobs or getting the job hunt process and you feel imposter syndrome, use the fact that you have been committed to this, you've been consistent hopefully, and that should be a reason enough to be confident. Doesn't mean you have to be arrogant or cocky, but just be confident yourself and like I said, let the chips fall where they may. All right, so those are the biggest regrets I have looking back on when I was learning to code. I genuinely hope that this video has been helpful. Definitely leave a comment if this video has helped or if you wanna share anything on your journey as well. All right, now other than that, if you are interested in getting more content from me, I would definitely recommend jumping into my Facebook group. I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. So thank you so much as always for watching and peace out.